Hi everybody, you're tuned into Music Box. My guest today is actually very special because it's a young Armenian American that's successful and that's what Music Box is all about, providing a platform for young Armenian Americans to promote their projects while conveying a positive message to our youth. Here we have Dr. Ara Cherik, chiropractor. How are you? Doing well, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. Thanks for coming on to the show. Um, I'm going to be picking your brain for a little bit. Please, please do. Yes, yes. <laughs> so my first question is, what first inspired you to get into, um, you know, to pursue your passion as a chiropractor? You know, I think primarily what inspired me to go into healthcare in general was the fact that I was brewed into such a medically oriented family mm -hmm. and that um, they really shaped my understanding of healthcare and what it has to offer and all the benefits that come from it. So that was what primarily started me off. And then with chiropractic, I think I was totally drawn to chiropractic and attracted to it because of the fact that it's such a wide umbrella of a holistic field. You right. know, you can become like a pediatric chiropractic, a sports chiropractor, you can get into uh, geriatric chiropractics and uh, neurology. So I think there was when it really sparked my interest, the fact that it's such a holistic approach and yet you can do so much with it as well. Right. Nice. Nice. I see. And um, I know that it is a considerably lengthy amount of schooling that you went through. How is that experience? You know, the schooling is pretty incredible. It's an incredible experience to say the least. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes it will feel like you're standing on the bottom of the mountain <laughs> and you're looking at top and, and you're wondering how you're going to get up there and, right. and what steps you're going to take. I remember uh, when in my experience, I wrote a few gushing emails to my friends and family telling them, <laughs> complaining about how much school is consuming my life and all. And so I think um, there was one point in time where you realized that you become desensitized to the pressure and all of a sudden it becomes second nature. Right. Mm, all of a sudden it just becomes business as usual. So you go in there and nothing really um, scares you anymore with school. So in the beginnings it's tough. Uh, there's definitely going to be some moments where you're just really wondering how you're going to get through it. But again, there's some point in time where you find your rhythm and you keep going and you, and you just go forward like it's business as usual. Right, yeah, yeah it, I mean, definitely I can imagine that it was a trying experience, but it's all a matter of being ambitious um, and following what you're passionate about. So what is actually the process? So uh, with school, you basically, you know, you finish school and that's what you mean, right? With yes, school. exactly. Yeah. So you finish school uh, for four years and uh, your last year you do your clinical rotations. Okay. And what that really does is it really fine tunes your clinical reasoning and your, your clinical character in that they give you opportunities to really see cases and to basically decide on how you're going to act and, and what choices you're going to make and, and what decisions you're going to make in certain cases and they kind of throw you out there <laughs> in the water and, and kind of test what your judgment is mm -hmm. so, which is really important because in the field when you're really out there and, and you're seeing cases no one's really going to warn you of anything right. it's just going to come in and it's going to surprise you <laughs> and, um, so school's uh, last few years are really clinical and that's the best part of it and you really prepare yourself for the real world then um, they go through a few like the, of the most common conditions and treatments that you will help you down the line. Right. So you always have that in the back of your head. And then at the same time, you should just expect to see certain things that you wouldn't expect to see out in the field. Right. And um, be prepared to handle them uh, accordingly. I always wonder because um, obviously you go through all this clinical training and everything. Do they ever um, go through, like, have you ever undergone, uh, I guess, training, you would call it, or in dealing with different personalities as far as like patients that, you know, you'll be meeting, greeting, treating? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, it was in your last year uh, or second to last year, you take a, a, a psychology class. And oh, okay. You really do a, deal with interesting personalities in that class. You kind of um, look at uh, one side of healthcare that you really didn't see before because you look at it where you can have somebody coming in <laughs> like <laughs> histrionic personalities, neurotic personalities. Right. And really just to be able to identify those and not um, get kind of sidetracked is, is a, a skill on its own. And you really be, you have to be ready for that. You have right. to have like your, your knowledge fine tuned for that. So you do, you have to, I mean, with any kind of healthcare, really be prepared to 
deal with the sociology behind healthcare and the psychology behind healthcare. So you really have to be prepared to see any kind of personality, any kind of uh, any kind of really an individual that might come in and kind of throw you off a little bit. There's always different steps to take with different kinds of personalities. Right. There's, there's personalities that are needy in certain ways. There's personalities that, you know, they um, will want certain things and they will kind of want to sidetrack you from certain things. Again, you're not necessarily a psychologist, but it kind of prepares you for a certain kind of a situation. Like yeah, that. of course. I think you have to have a certain kind of tact and an approach to it. Of yeah. course, definitely. So we're here with Dr. Ara Cherik and we have a lot more questions for him. Of course, you can check him out online, visit his Facebook page and call the phone number on the screen for more information and stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey guys, you're back on Music Box. I'm your host, Maria Cosette, and my very special guest today is Dr. Ara Chara, chiropractor. Of course, you will find California Spine Care Institute in Glendale. And for all further information, you can call the number on the screen. So, Dr. Cherik, or can I call you Ara? Uh, you can call me Ara. Okay, Ara. Um, so, what advice would you give aspiring chiropractors? You know, I would advise... Uh couple things that would be pretty helpful. The first one would be to really, you want to manage your expectations before you get into any kind of a healthcare field. Now, what I would say that means is really just to go out and seek someone out who is actively in the field mm -hmm. and really understand what it is the field entails and what it is going to be like when you get out and actually be in active practice. For me, um, it was a very important thing before I got into it because you really want to test the waters first, make sure it is the right thing for you before you go out and really dedicate um, a little chunk of your life into getting into it. You know? <laughs> oh, just a little <laughs> chunk of your life. <laughs> so it's definitely one thing where you want to do is it's, it's really important to manage your expectations, meaning you know, go out there, learn about it so there's really no surprises and you know what to expect um, in the field and you know what part of healthcare you are in when, when it comes to providing for you know, patients. Um, the second thing I would say, and this is kind of pretty, pretty important too, is to really always have a great role model. Having a great role model is, is important because you, you choose a character that you admire and then you take character traits from them and you, you build your own practitioner character. And so you, you choose someone that you respect and you basically help build your own kind of identity as a practitioner with the way they handle uh, things and their patients and their demeanor and everything. So definitely. I think that's definitely helpful. That was probably easy for you to find since your doctor is a reputable, your doctor, your mm -hmm. father is a reputable doctor, um, very well respected in the community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some people call him the dean of neurology. <laughs> ah, that's a good one. I yeah, like that. it's good to. Uh, I work with uh, two neurologists, and I'm, I'm really blessed to have you know both of them around and looking over my shoulder and um, basically to have them uh, looking after me and uh, giving me advice here and there is is a uh, is a great thing for me, and I, I appreciate it every day. Yeah, yeah. that's super important. Um, now let's talk about your practice. What services do you offer? What procedures? And what can patients come to seek at your um, office? Yeah, so um, at our office, we offer a wide range of non-invasive pain management in a sense that we, you, you know, you can come in and we can start off with a thorough history and we get into a proper exam, narrow down some diagnoses and basically start a management plan for that. Okay. Now, just to kind of uh, put it into perspective, uh, some of the patients that come into our office come in for chronic pain, they come in for acute pain. The age range just varies from, you know, really young to getting up there to the senior ages and everything in between. Mm -hmm. So you have your weekend warriors, your, your athletes, your, your sports specific athletes, your CrossFit enthusiasts, and everybody comes in to really gain maximum physical potential. Okay. Some people come in because of sports injuries. Other people come in because of um, just chronic long time injuries um, and the pain that they've had for those. Right. So the services we offer are uh, spread across throughout uh, our range of, of practice. And basically what that means is we offer chiropractic adjustments, physiotherapy, uh, I entail a lot of physiotherapy in my treatments. I entail a lot of uh, rehab, um, sports-specific rehab, 
I entail a lot of uh, spinal traction and that if somebody has any kind of um, disc bulge or disc herniation, it really does open up the facets and kind of, and uh, really allows the nerves to breathe. Uh, I involve a lot of, you know, hot, cold therapies alternating in between and a lot of uh, electrotherapy, microcurrent, TENS, and uh, yeah, a lot of dietary uh, counseling as well. I think that's what one of the more important things in practice is to never forget to include dietary counseling. A lot of people can come in and you can uh, try to hit every base and, mm -hmm. and kind of go from there, but you can't ever really forget uh, diet and nutritional counseling because that's definitely important uh, a lot of the time, especially definitely. nowadays. People, some people might, you know, have uh, diabetes, not ever really know it. And so you really want to catch those kind of things beforehand and something that you can change uh, diet with your diet, you really want to be able to do that and allow people to kind of understand how they can do that. Most definitely. Yeah. I love it. This is such an educational <laughs> episode for all my viewers. <laughs> so stay tuned. We'll be back with Dr. Ara Trick. Hey guys, we're back on Music Box and today we have a very intellectual guest, Dr. Ara Cherik, chiropractor. You can check out California Spine Care Institute in Glendale and of course, call the phone number for any further information. So, um, I wanted to ask you, what are some suggestions you have as far as preventive? Um, maybe some tips on, you know, sleeping habits, ergonomics, diet. Yeah, so uh, those are actually three really important things uh, everyone should be mindful of. Um, sleeping habits, uh, and this is kind of the toughest gray area when it comes to um, sleeping. It's really tough to <laughs> really tell someone um, you have to change your sleeping habits because right. it's everyone's kind of personal, very delicate <laughs> thing. You know, you can have a guy that sleeps like in a pretzel or like some people just are comfortable in certain positions. Right. So. With that comes, find a, po a position for sleeping that really doesn't cause any strain. And I think it's really obvious and you'll feel it right off the bat if, if you're having kind of strain, anything like that. So my favorite would be to advise people to sleep on their back. Now, I completely understand it's not an easy thing to do. Especially. It's not very <laughs> comfortable. It's not. And honestly, it, it's not the most comfortable position, but if you can find it and make it comfortable. Like, right. I use a tip where I just fold my pillow and kind of let my head just rest over it, kind of like you have a, like an airplane pillow over your neck. Okay. In a sense, it's kind of just giving your neck support. Right. And so that's my, that's the reason why it's my favorite kind of position to sleep is because you have that neck support and your, your spine is in kind of its natural curve with your, right. your lordosis and your, your kyphosis. So that's one thing. If you sleep on your side, Try to maintain a pillow in between your knees. If you do sleep on your back, you can have a pillow uh, underneath your, your feet. Okay. So those are two good tips when it comes to sleeping. And again, if you just absolutely cannot be sleeping on your back, and it's not that sleeping on your back might be the best position either, what it comes down to is what is the most comfortable and what doesn't put any strain on any kind of muscle or any kind of nerve bundles in the area as well. Right. You know, I know people love to sleep with their arm under their pillow and kind of just like relax that way too. If you notice you wake up in the middle of the night and you have like, <laughs> you have like this tingly feeling in your arm, you got to do something about that. And uh, Yeah, that's probably not a good thing yeah, if you exactly. wake up with a numb arm. <laughs> it's like it's a really, little sign. You got to change a few things <laughs> up there, you know, definitely try to um, find a new a way to get comfortable. Mm -hmm. And so those are, those are the main things. Try to get comfortable and try to really monitor yourself at night. If you're sleeping and you notice any kind of discomfort, we'll try to see why that is and mm -hmm. try to see if you can change that. When it comes to ergonomics, it's, it's really important because most of us, when we work, we are looking down really focused or looking up at the computer really focused. Right. And this happens a lot where over time it becomes just chronic imbalance in muscles because of posture. So chronic imbalance of muscles because of posture, what does that really lead to? It can lead to chronic pain. I have a, a bunch of uh, guys and girls who come in because of exactly that. They have mid back pain, they have you know shoulder pain, and basically the reason for that is for so long they had an imbalance in their muscles because of their ergonomic position that it's just caused the muscles that should be strong to get weak and the muscles that are normally strong to just get 
even tighter. And so it's creating an imbalance and it's pulling on your, your spinal curve in a sense that it's causing knots and it's causing adhesions. And those are referring pain and, and they call that myofascial pain syndrome. And there you go, like you have this pain that's all around and you're wondering why and you have a bunch of knots in your back. It could be because of you know your your position and and how it's kind of offsetting your your natural spinal curve. So, ergonomics are super important. You want to make sure like your computer is kind of up at you where you're not really tilting or looking up too much. Oh, okay. And you want to not really look down too much when you're working. You know, if you have to, you can go ahead and do it, of course, but not overly kind of keeping yourself in that position. Nothing excessive. Right. Right. Yeah. And um, as far as diet, diet is a huge, huge, huge uh, topic and issue. I mean, there's chapters that can be written on every single, you know, specificity when it comes to diet. But my main advice would be honestly to really monitor yourself. Uh, make sure you're paying attention to your body. Make sure you're, you know if you're gaining weight drastically or if you're losing weight drastically. Make sure you know if you have high blood sugar. And if you do, you really want to mind you know, your carbs and your sugars, and, and you really want to be careful when it comes to that. Now, um, when it comes to diet, you really want to stay away from certain things. If you have cholesterol problems, you want to stay away from, you know, a lot of cholesterol. And one way, the first kind of step to really finding out where you're at is to, if you're, you know, suspecting if you have um, cholesterol issues, get a lipid panel done, get a blood test done if you're suspecting if you have, you know, uh, high blood sugar, right. have your sugar checked. So you really want to take preventative measures in that you want to take measures to find out exactly where you're at so that then from that point on you can continue on and, and kind of be mindful of, of your health and your diet. Um, and I think some people uh, don't really kind of, health is obviously the most important thing. Um, and they don't pay attention to the fact that, for, exa for example, like your annual exams, how important they are, your blood work and all of that. These are things that can help you prevent health right. conditions. Yeah, absolutely. You always want to make sure you, you do go to your annual exams. If you haven't been in a while, you haven't been your primary in a while and you haven't gotten checked up in a while and you, you feel like it, it might be time, well, you should, you should actually be doing it. You can do it annually and kind of keep that on track. If you notice any kind of change, if you're having any kind of fever, chills, sudden weight loss, I mean, you know, you're losing massive amounts of weight in a small amount of time, you really do want to go and get in checked and get kind of screened uh, immediately, you know. And if you have fever, chills, if you're having, um, you know, high temperature, you want to make sure to check if you don't have an infection, mm -hmm. things of that sort you really want to be mindful of. Yeah. I have a question for you because I know that everybody loves to get a massage. And um, I've heard a lot that um, getting you know, massages all the time on a consistent basis, um, not with a chiropractor, but let's say with a masseuse or mm -hmm. whoever the case may be, um, that may not necessarily be good for you. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so what I think about that is that if you are a massage enthusiast, it's a great thing, you know, it does feel great. However, the way it becomes problematic is that when you go and you get a really thorough massage, and sometimes especially when it's a certain kind of massage where they have to stand on your back and yeah. things, very extreme, exotic things like that, where they like walk on your back like that, is... Uh, is of course problematic you want to avoid things like that now when it comes to excessive massages here's the thing most people have a group of muscles that are always hypertonic they're too tight mm -hmm. most people have a group of muscles that are always uh, hypotonic they're too they're too weak and to bring those up to balance is the key for everyone and that can decrease pain that can decrease a lot of musculoskeletal issues so if you want to go in there and start massaging a muscle that's just always weak then you're kind of um, counteracting what your goal should be. Mm -hmm. And I think everyone should learn exactly which muscles are the ones that you know, get weak and try to strengthen those, which muscles are the ones that get tight and try to you know, um, stretch those out. So I think all it takes is just a little bit of uh, insight into which muscles should be worked on. And then when you do go get a massage, you can kind of um, not only impress the masseuse, but let them know exactly where they should be working. Right. And can someone come to you if they're having, um, if let's say they just want a massage, but they want it with someone that, you know, is an actual like 
a doctor and they don't want to just go to a random you know massage parlor or whatever yeah at, well at this point in time i don't have a, a massage therapist working with me but it's going to be something to consider down the line for me so Maybe down the line at this point in time, I'm just kind of focusing in on uh, non-invasive pain management and working with... The more important things. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Um, and I love that you, you emphasize on the non-invasive. That's very important. Yeah, it's huge nowadays, uh, especially for, you know, especially for the younger generation, the younger families. It's, it's become a thing where you want to look at things that if they're not necessarily uh, called for, mm -hmm. you don't want to, you, know, you don't want to do. And if they, uh, all, a lot of the times they are called for. And here's the thing, like everything in healthcare has its place, everything. Invasive, non-invasive, you know, um, nutrition, uh, natural supplements and medications. Right. Everything has its place in healthcare. And so what you really want to do is get screened from the beginning and understand what's going on first and then take a look at your options on what you want to do. I see. And my last question for you is, if someone has chronic pain, does that mean that they have to uh, you know, constantly come on a regular basis and get treatment, or is it a case-by-case -case thing? Yeah, that's a really good question, actually. Um, what we do there is, before we kind of advise how often you should come, again, we, we do our workup. And we ask ourselves, why? Why are you having chronic pain? Exactly. So we do special imaging, special studies to figure out exactly why. And so a lot of the times it's just a vast variety of reasons. And, you know, one example would be if somebody comes in with chronic pain, you know, they're in their higher, um, uh, you know, they're, they're just up there with age, you know, like 60, 70. And, and you look at their x-rays and they have just severe osteoarthritis. And that definitely causes chronic pain. Now, mm -hmm. At that point in time, we can help, but it would uh, it would if it would be different for someone else who's coming in for something else. If someone else comes in for chronic pain caused by muscle imbalance, then it would be a different time frame for that as well. So I guess the answer to that would be it really does depend. And what we want to do is start off with a thorough exam, figure out exactly what is the pain generator, and then go from there into. Uh, deciding uh, how many times it would take and our goal in general at my office is to make you you know feel better alleviate your pain and get you up on your feet and landing on your feet as fast as possible in the least amount of time so awesome yeah nice sounds good um, so we have just a couple of more questions we're about to wrap up the show but stay with us I'm here with Dr. R.I. Cherry You're back on Music Box. I'm your host, Maria Cosette. I'm here with guest Dr. Ara Cherry, chiropractor of California Spine Care Institute, located in Glendale. Um, so, Ara, since we are at an entertainment show, and um, you know, you've given us a tremendous amount of information. Truly, I've learned from you a lot during this episode, and I'm sure my viewers have as well. Um, let's talk about some fun stuff. Since you are a young, accomplished um, doctor, what are some things you like to do on your leisure time if you find time for some leisure? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When, when that time comes around, I love actually being active, going out and, and playing sports. My favorite would be tennis. Uh, nice. I consider myself a, a tennis player and a tennis enthusiast. I love uh, being out in the sun, that's the thing. So I love going to the beach, I, I surf, and uh, I love just being out there and, and playing sports and being active in the sun. So the beach is definitely uh, uh, one of my favorite things to do. Uh, tennis, and I love going to the lake with my friends and just spending time with my friends out there and kind of just enjoying. And to be honest, just taking it easy, you know? Awesome. Just taking it easy and enjoying. Yeah, of course, you know, you have a stressful line of work, so you need to find that time to yeah. relax. Are you wearing SPF when you're going out in the sun? <laughs> yes, I definitely, definitely Good. am. And you should be too as well. It's definitely important of to course. be out there and, and be protected. Yes, definitely. Um, and what about music? What are some types of music that you like? Yeah, uh, you know, I love music that, I could, I could put it this way, I love music that is kind to my ears. And <laughs> I start off there and then I go with... Um, everything as far as you know lounge music to indie to pop to dance and, and house and all that and I uh, recently got turned on to a very uh, special artist named uh, Maria Cosette. Oh god! <laughs> Not sure if you've heard her but she sounds honestly, familiar. A very talented voice in music. <laughs> oh and please. Yes Thanks. yeah it's it's really amazing to kind of just sit there and listen to such uh, good talent in, in our community and so 
congratulations on your thanks for new album making me blush. <laughs> thanks. Yeah, with your new album coming up and all, it's Thank it's, you. it's really important and it's 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 a blessing to actually have your voice in our community. Oh my goodness, thank you. I don't really know what to say to that, but thank you so much. Um, and I in turn have to really thank you for uh, really being such a positive role model in our community. And uh, to be a positive role model to our younger Armenian Americans, uh, truly commendable the work you've done and your ambition and everything. So thank you so much for coming on to my show. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, guys, for tuning into Music Box. Of course, I'm here with a fresh episode every week. Check out California Spine Care Institute located in Glendale. For any further information, you can call the number on the screen. And remember, Dr. R. Chair, chiropractor. Bye, guys. See you all next week. <laughs>